Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary and I'm an illustrator and graphic designer from Canada. It's been a while since I've done a full sketchbook tour. Um, it's taken me a while to finish this sketchbook and I still have another one on the go that's going to take me a little while longer still. Because of my full-time job that I've been at for six or seven months now, um, I don't have as much time to sketch on my own as I used to. Uh, which is fine by by me. I do a lot of sketching at work for work, but all of that stuff is is sort of a secret. So um, I finally have a finished watercolor sketchbook here. Um, this is the Global Art Supplies, Global Art Materials, the Handbook Travelog uh, watercolor sketchbook. Um, I like this quite a lot. I think it's definitely comparable to the Pentalic Aqua Journal or the Moleskin um, watercolor sketchbook. So, you know, um, the fabric cover is really nice. I like that quite a lot. And I think the, the orange little ribbon bookmarker is nice too. So visually, I think this is really cool. Um, in terms of the paper inside, pretty standard. So I started this sketchbook back in August. And you may remember this piece here from the Brooks Medieval Fair. I painted this one for a time lapse. This is my dad's helmet um, and a buckler shield. Uh, and I painted this uh, in situ um, at the fair. So that was really fun to do. On this page here, I was trying out the Kurataki Gansai Tambi watercolors, um, which I'd never used before. I bought them off of Amazon on a whim, and uh, to be perfectly honest, I don't think I have used them since. Um, I would like to, to try them out a bit more, but they they behave in a way that I'm, I'm not used to, and uh, not really how I, I work typically. Um, I like lots of opaques, even with my watercolors, um, and because this is quite transparent um, and when it becomes opaque it gets glossy. Um, not really my favorite, but I like this painting and the shades of green in it. Over here is a painting of a skunk skull that I did um, with the Bloodstone Genuine watercolor from Daniel Smith. And this is just some washi tape. I think I did this for the, the intro of a video or something. <laughs> A lot of this sketchbook is going to be just like me trying materials out, trying out different things, seeing like working wet in wet, what that is like. Um, it's really nice just to play around sometimes, so a lot of the stuff in this sketchbook is, is nowhere near a finished piece. This bird I painted with Otto Cano's watercolors that she made um, by hand, and I really like these. These are some of my favorites in my in my handmade watercolor palette. Um, this is a swatch little set of everything that's in my handmade watercolor palette right now. Um, I think I have a few more. I always swatch it every time I get something new just to see what the, the spread is like. Um, and it's fun. <laughs> just a couple of little splattery dragons. This is the piece I did for Inktober. Um, and it's very shiny, as you can see, like that vermilion ink is very glossy and it's very bright. This is a very bright um, in person and on the camera. Here's just a really quick gouache landscape I did of a sunset. Um, it's really fun to, to sort of push um, the wet in wet with gouache. I love the way that gouache works um, wet into wet because it's so creamy and it, it blends these really nice sort of feathered fuzzy edges. Um, here's a, <laughs> a page that I ripped out because it looked real bad um, and it was the same subject as this painting um, but I repainted it and did about a thousand times better. So sometimes you just need to really mess it up in the first go <laughs> to know what not to do uh, to get a good result. I also picked up some water soluble graphite pencils um, and wanted to try them out a little bit more 
in my sketchbook. So I was just doing some portraits. It's sort of a neat um, result when you lay down a wash of just water first and then draw into it um, because these lines then become very permanent like I can't erase or rub them out <laughs> so I was trying a few different techniques with with the water soluble graphite and here I was just playing around with um, watercolors seeing how different pigments react seeing what sort of patterns I can get we'll see if the camera will focus on this some really nice sort of dendrite river delta looking um, results on this page. This color here, I believe, is the um, the core transparent iron oxide, um, and it has a very sort of like rusty, like granular, dirty look to it. Um, but it's very luminous uh, and very transparent, like the like the name says. I'm not really sure how to use that in a final piece yet, but it's really fun just to see what sort of swatches I can create. These two pages are done with water soluble colored pencils and just seeing how they blend together too. Here are some swatches. Um, there's a few different pigments that I'm using here, but this one um, that stands out in particular is ultramarine rose I believe or ultramarine violet one of the two but it's very a very unique purpley pinky bluey color um, this one here is done with that transparent iron oxide and and I quite like this I like how it turned out I did this without reference I just really wanted to paint something with stripes so I laid in the background first and then and then painted the details over it so that everything is very unified and warm. And here's just a piece of uh, Jin Erso from uh, Rogue One, a Star Wars story. And this one I laid in with a very bright underpainting. You can see bits of it here. So it was like orange. Um, and that way the orange shines through the rest of the painting, even though the rest of it is quite quite muted. Um, I like what's going on down here with the orange peeking through and around her hair too. <clears throat> this page is mostly just alizarin crimson. I just wanted to try out some, some watercolor techniques. Um, I wanted to paint something over top of this, like the, the stripy kimono piece from before, but I really liked just how this looked and it's so bright, so I didn't want to cover it up or anything. Oftentimes with big pieces of texture like this, I'll scan them at a really high resolution and then I can apply them to my digital art um, or my graphic design pieces and stuff like that. So even even little things in your sketchbook that don't seem useful can, can find a use if you just <laughs> scan them really high res, basically. Um, this, I was playing with some umbers and siennas and then I was really interested in, in cave art cave paintings. So um, this is all just sepia. Really nice color. I think this is Windsor and Newton sepia. And then I was trying out some cave painting horses with the water soluble graphite. I think these ones turned out really cool. Um, I love sort of the texture of the mane fading away and the, the dots on the rump. And here's a another one speedy horse. And uh, here are some more just in watercolor on this page. Um, going into it straight with watercolor with a brush, no pencil sketch underneath, and just seeing what sort of um, patterns and shapes I could create. Um, I'm really fond of, of this page. I think these are really beautiful. There's something here. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to use them for yet, but yeah, I'm really happy with these, especially this guy here. This is green and red watercolor mixed, um, so you can see the pigments pulling apart from each other. This page here is just some ginkgo leaves uh, that I painted for fun. Um, the base of it is, is this bright yellowy green. Um, 
and then I carved the leaves out of that afterwards. These are some color roughs um, for a freelance piece. And this is, you know, just a little pine cone. This is all done in, in Daniel Smith Cascade Green. Um, the same with, with this calligraphy page from a previous video. And here I was just trying out um, painting different colors with complementary pigments. Uh, this is Cascade Green and Alizarin Crimson. Um, and just sort of seeing how, how they combine and separate because Cascade Green is a multi-pigment multi color, um, so it does some really interesting stuff when you mix it with, with other watercolors. And then I just painted a dragon with, with some of those colors I created. That was really fun. Um, I did the, the same thing for the next page here. Um, these are Moon Glow Violet from Daniel Smith, which is also a multi-pigment color, and Transparent Yellow Oxide from Core. Uh, so you can see they do some some interesting things together as well and I painted just sort of a, a quick stylized jackrabbit on this side and then this page I was mixing the cascade green with the moon glow violet so it uh, there's a lot of pigments in here and they separate in really strange ways um, this page is kind of a crazy mess. A lot of wet in wet on here, a lot of like sort of brownish, greenish pigments left behind. Um, but yeah, it was just fun to, to mess around. Like it almost looks iridescent, but it's, it's totally matte. <laughs> just trying out more wet in wet here. These are some of my handmade watercolors, so they behave a little bit more like gouache um, with the soft feathering. And another try at the sort of horse motif. Um, this is also wet in wet. And a little bit more calligraphy here. And on this page, a little wet in wet. Um, how many times can I say wet in wet in this video? Uh, just some little holly berries or something. And then this page, I was just trying out some of my blues. So this is uh, copper turquoise and a, I think a Prussian blue and an indigo. Just trying out different combinations and getting different levels of luminosity. And these are some wet and wet, I'll say it one more time, uh, polka dots here. I think these remind me of like a, a poison dart frog or something. This is really nice. And for the last page, um, using my handmade watercolor palette um, and only the colors in that, I just wanted to, to paint a portrait of a character of mine um, to finish it off. So that's how that one turned out. And that's the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, my next sketchbook is going to take a while to finish, but once it's finished, it should be like, I don't know, like a 40 minute long video. It's going to be really long because the book is really long. So if you want to see that video in the future, please subscribe to my channel. You'll get notified um, if you hit the bell icon or however that works nowadays. And uh, as always, feel free to leave comments, leave suggestions, and have a great week. Bye!